This is the MSI RTX 5080 Expert, and it's definitely one of the most unique and elegant looking GPUs I have gotten my hands on. It's quite different from the gamer-oriented cards we've looked at from MSI in the past, as it's targeted more towards the professional and creator demographic, doing away with the flashy extra noise you're accustomed to. No, with this card, it's straight business over here. We're going to be talking about this graphics card's design and aesthetics, and we'll also be diving into some performance numbers as well to see what it can do out of the box and how it performs overclocked. I'm pretty excited about this one, so let's discuss all that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Today we're going to be taking a look at the MSI RTX 5080 Expert. MSI has released a bunch of variants based on the RTX 5080 GPU, and this expert model is a more premium design and what makes it unique is that it's not actually geared towards their usual gamer customer, but rather the professional segment. As for this overview, we'll be talking about the various aspects pertaining to this graphics card like the design that's similar to the RTX 40 series Founders Editions, its features, thermals, and a first look at performance to see what this card is really capable of. Stick around because this one actually gets pretty fascinating. Let's start off with an unboxing so you guys can see what to expect from the packaging and what's actually included inside. It comes in a fairly standard sized box and I'm not gonna lie the graphics or art style of the box is kind of deceiving with the multicolor scheme. Opening up the box and I'm pleased to see how the card comes protected with plenty of cushioning foam to prevent any damages during shipping and also wrapped in an anti-ESD bag. There's also a small accessories box and that will have your 12 VHPWR to 3 8 pin adapter, and along with that, a GPU stand. It'll do the job, but I'm kind of disappointed that it's a little flimsy plastic jack. Let's talk about what this card is packing under the hood. It uses Nvidia's Blackwell architecture and the GB203 GPU. Nvidia equips this card with 16 gigabytes of GDDR7 memory, running at 30 gigabits per second, which delivers a huge 960 gigabytes of bandwidth. The Expert OC edition I have here features a factory overclock that pushes the boost clock to around 2.7 GHz, with an optional software toggle increasing it slightly more. Power consumption is rated at 360 watts, so MSI recommends pairing the card with at least an 850 watt power supply. In terms of display outputs, it consists of three DisplayPort 2.1B connectors and one HDMI 2.1B connector supporting up to four displays and resolutions up to 7680 by 4320. Connection to your system is via the new PCIe Gen 5 X16 interface. Moving on and let's talk about aesthetics, design, and the build quality of the RTX 5080 Expert. The design of the RTX 5080 Expert is a significant departure from their typical gaming GPUs. MSI positions the Expert series between its gaming series and the flagship Vanguard series, and the aesthetic is intentionally modest. Instead of the plastic shrouds and light bars, the entire card is encased in a precision-engineered die-cast aluminum shell. The front half of the shroud is finished in a subtle champagne gold tone, while the rear half is matte black. This dual-tone look combined with the minimalist MSI branding makes the card feel more like a piece of industrial art than a gaming product. There's no RGB here, a deliberate choice to appeal to the professional users who might not want a light show in their workstation. One of the most striking elements is the large geometric mesh on the front of the card. This lattice work isn't just decorative, it's part of the cooling system and provides pass-through for air to flow directly into the heatsink. When I looked at it at a first glance in person, it reminded me of the bold grill on a high-end sports coupe. Think of the Mercedes C-Class or a modern Lexus, like the C300. Combined with the metal chassis, it gives the 5080 Expert a refined, automotive-inspired look that sets it apart from the usual gamer aesthetic, and I'm truly appreciative of that. I think they really knocked it out of the park with this design. Cooling is handled by MSI's Flow Frozer 2 thermal design. Unlike typical 3-fan gaming cards, the Expert uses a push-pull configuration with two large fans. The front fan pushes air into the dense fin stack, directing heat out of the rear I.O. bracket and underneath the card. Meanwhile, a second fan on the back pulls air through the heatsink and out the open mesh grill. This pass-through design allows air to move straight through the card rather than circulating it inside your case, and it's one of the reasons why MSI claims they can use a fully enclosed metal shroud 
without compromising temperatures. Now that is something that does concern me, so we're going to be putting that to the test. Beneath the fans is a vapor chamber that makes direct contact with the GPU and memory chips feeding into the MSI Square Profile core pipes for efficient transfer. Even with the factory overclock, MSI suggests that the card runs cool and quiet. But don't worry, like I said, we're going to validate that in just a few moments. As mentioned earlier, the RTX 5080 Expert is a substantial piece of hardware. It is a bulky card, so you're going to have to take into account the clearance that you have in your case. At 319 by 150 and 60 millimeters long, it's taller and significantly thicker than Nvidia's own Founders Edition 5080. The depth makes it effectively a three slot card, so you'll need to ensure your case and motherboard have enough clearance. It also weighs about 1.9 kilograms, so using the included support stand is highly recommended. Despite its heft, the balanced design and metal construction give the card a very premium feel. There's absolutely no flex when handling it. If you're building a workstation for perhaps 3D modeling, video editing, AI upscaling workflows, or engineering apps, and you don't want your rig to look like a Las Vegas strip sign, this aesthetic makes sense. No RGB strips across the shroud, no aggressive plastic wings, just clean metal and a geometric mesh and a purposeful cutout that visually communicates with the airflow and structure. By foregoing RGB lighting and adopting a sleek metal finish, MSI is clearly positioning the expert line towards professionals who actually care about aesthetics but don't necessarily want their workstation to look like a gaming rig or something that a unicorn vomited over. The card's elegant, modern luxury design and robust aluminum construction convey a sense of quality you normally see in high-end audio equipment or automotive interiors. It looks at home next to a color-calibrated monitor and a mechanical keyboard in a muted colorway. That doesn't mean gamers won't love it, it just means the card won't visually fight with a more refined setup. MSI's own hierarchy and copy for the expert back that in elegant and industrial direction rather than a pure gamer identity. And I for one would welcome if more and more AIBs could make these kinds of designs rather than flooding the market with tacky gamer designs. So great job MSI on the design, I could easily see myself rocking this in my rig. Let's move on and talk about thermal performance along with power consumption, and then we'll look at some performance as well. Now I've been doing this testing on my test bench which I've swapped out for my 14900K platform because I recently got my hands on the MSI Z790 M Power motherboard. No, MSI did not actually send me that motherboard. This is an Asian market exclusive board. I was able to find one here in Canada, luckily, probably the only one with it here, and I wanted to play around it with it for some memory overclocking. I got DDR5 8000 working on it pretty easily, still faffing with it to see if I can push it further, but let me know if you guys would be interested in an overview video for this board as well. Up on the screen, you guys will see the test system specs, and I'll also have it in the video description below. Now, rather than show you guys a boring chart after running some long synthetic stress tests, I thought I'd show you guys a more practical scenario. This is Alan Wake 2 running at 4K max settings, no RT, and it's quite a demanding and GPU heavy game, so it's a good way to stress the GPU and allow us to see what thermals and power consumption is like. We're not focusing on performance here, so don't worry about that. And this gameplay footage is from a 30 minute session to allow temps and power to normalize. And as you guys can see from the performance overlay, we're averaging around 68 degrees Celsius for the GPU core temp. And do note that this was tested in a room with an ambient room temperature of around 24C. I had been doing some testing for another video, so temps were higher than usual that day. With that said, the GPU core temp is still great, and keep in mind, this is with the out-of-the-box fan curve, which I found is a little bit on the passive side, as the fans are running at just shy of 1500 RPM. But this allows the card to boost comfortably out-of-the-box, with no tweaking, we're seeing around 2800 MHz, which is fantastic well above the advertised boost clock. As for the memory, it's sitting around 70C, which is nothing problematic for GDDR7. But with a custom fan curve, you can improve it substantially, as you guys will see shortly. Power consumption is ranging from around 350 to 360 watts, which is fairly typical for what you'd expect out of Nvidia's 80 class GPUs. Sure, it's on the higher side, but I will be making some future content with this card exploring power limiting and undervolting to really hit the efficiency sweet spot. Moving on to overclocking, which I leveraged MSI Afterburner for, I was able to apply a plus 350 offset to the GPU core and plus 2000 to the memory with the power limit at 110%, with the voltage slider at max as well. 
If I fine-tune the curve, maybe I'd be able to inch a, a little bit more boost, but honestly, this was good enough for me. Along with that, I did apply my own custom fan curve, which is something I'm always recommending people to do. I mean, if you're tuning the card, you might as well tackle the thermals while you're at it to give the card as much headroom as possible. So with these settings applied in Alan Wake 2, we can see a number of changes. We see the GPU core clock speed boost to around 3200 MHz, which is a pretty nice uplift, Power consumption is right around 400 watts, so it's definitely on the higher side now, but MSI has done a great job with this cooler because with the fan curve running with the way I have set it, it's just a bit more aggressive. We're getting cooler temps than we were out of the box, where now our GPU is running around 60C and the memory is also around the same temps due to that flow through design we talked about earlier. So absolutely no issues. This cooler is doing a great job and that enables the user to take advantage of overclocking headroom. If you were concerned about this cooler's performance due to the previous iteration having sort of a bad rep, rest assured MSI has addressed those concerns. Let's move on to some performance numbers and I will be making a couple of follow-up videos pitting this card against a few others in my inventory and a wide selection of benchmarks, so stay tuned for those videos. For this video I only wanted to include a few isolated benchmarks, so I did a run of 3D Mark's Steel Nomad with the card in its stock configuration and I was able to attain a score of 8706, which is right around the average for a 5080. Then I applied my own overclocked settings and reran the benchmark, and then I attained a score of 9647, and when we do the math, that's an improvement of 11%. Not too bad for a quick overclock, but let's see how that translates to real world performance. So for this test, I decided to launch Oblivion Remaster at 4K native, Ultra settings, and software Lumen RT. I tested this game using the stock configuration, which you'll see is on the left side, and the right side is with the GPU overclocked. I didn't realize how demanding this game can be at 4K. With the 5080 at stock, it attained an average FPS of 58, and 51 on the 1% lows. Then when we overclock the GPU, we see the average FPS increase by 10% to 64 FPS, and our 1% lows also go up by the same margin. So that actually lines up with our 3D Mark scores. So when overclocked, we basically gave the RTX 5080 Expert another 10% boost. So to wrap this all up, MSI's RTX 5080 really delivers a good complete package here. A classy, professional aesthetic with that automotive inspired grille, real metal construction, and a cooler that backs up the looks with quiet, reliable performance and legit overclocking headroom. If you want a 5080 that doesn't scream gamer, but still delivers the goods and actual workloads and games, this is the one I'd be happy to keep in my own rig. I'll have more head-to-heads on the channel soon, but for now I'm pretty impressed. Great design, great execution, and great results. If you're thinking about picking one up, I'll leave my affiliate links down below. Using those is an easy way to support the channel at no extra cost. And let me know what you guys want me to test this card against, or what games you guys want me to test, in the comments down below. For now, I want to thank you guys for watching and the support. We'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.